Joaquin Buckley might have just gotten the, the greatest finish of his entire career. Like, I would put this above the most viral KO ever, that like that spinning back kick, ninja KO that he hit at Fight Island that I think got him like $250,000. Yeah, no, I would put this above that because Joaquin Buckley went from being an unranked new welterweight. Like, well, let's get that straight. A lot of the fights that you know him for come from middleweight. And I'm so glad he finally went down the welterweight because he does have a great build for that division. And it is a division of strikers. That is what it's turning into. So Buckley is going to do better in this division now. However, he had the little problem of being 29 years old, going down a weight class, and having to come up when you have other prospects like Savkat Rachmanov, Ian Gary, Jack Della Maddalena, you have those cha that changing of the guard generation. And he gets the, the, the biggest win of his entire career against Vincente Luque in a fight that he should not have been in. And I don't mean that like in a mean way. Like, no, no, the amount of things that needed to happen, the amount of, th of things that needed to go wrong for Buckley to get this fight, let me give you a super quick explanation of why this fight's happened, because I did see a lot of the comments of, why is Vincente Luque fighting Joaquin Buckley, an unranked welterweight? Let me tell you what happened here. So, it all starts with Ian Gary's wife, okay? Like, like, like uh, it, that's not even really a joke. So, you know that whole wife drama that even I've made videos on? So, Ian Gary, that whole drama came out right before the UFC 296 press conference. At that press conference, it was Colby Covington, Leon Edwards, Ian Gary was going to be there against his opponent at the time was Vincente Luque. They were supposed to fight each other at UFC 296. Ian Gary pulled out because of influenza. Listen, I'm a, I'll take him at his word. Do I really think he got scared and pulled out of the press conference? No. I, I don't think that actually happened. I think it was super, super unlikely, and it just so happened to work out well for him. But it didn't work out well for Vincente Luque. Let me tell you what I think happened. I think Vincente Luque was offered a sort notice opponent for UFC 296. He said no, because he was training for Ian Gary, a striker, somebody that you have to train to fight somebody like that. And they probably offered him an opponent like a Son Brady, somebody different, like somebody that was a completely different stylistic matchup to him. And that's why I believe that fight between, like, there was no Vincente Luque fight on that bout. We were all hyped for Vincente Luque versus Ian Gary. That never happened. That's why, instead of rescheduling it, they did Ian Gary against Jeff Neal, because that was a fight that was already in the works before. Jeff Neal was ranked, and they could do Vincente Luque against somebody else because Vincente Luque didn't want to take a fight on short notice. It is kind of scummy by the UFC. I'm not going to lie to you. It's business is business. I, I get it. So, who do you think they offer him? Do you think it was Vincente Luque versus Joaquin Buckley? No, it was not. It was Vincente Luque versus Son Brady. That's why I think it was Son Brady at UFC 296, but you need a full training camp of wrestling and grappling to fight somebody like Son Brady. He is a great grappler. I understand he doesn't have hands. Watch the Calvin Gastelum fight. Brady can fucking grapple with the best of them. These Philadelphia guys, the Carlson competition team is, they're a problem. So the fight gets made. What happens next? Son Brady is out with an injury. Again. Okay, so let's offer Vincente Luque, not really a short notice. This was kind of right after the fight got announced. So this gives Vincente Luque enough time to train for this bout. That's why I believe he took it. Luque probably wants to make some money. He wants to avoid ring rust. Says, okay, I'll fight anybody. Just like, give me somebody that's, you know, don't, 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 don't give me Savkat Rachmanov. So they give him a guy who has two wins in the welterweight division, who is admittedly a pretty fun dude to hear speak. He's a pretty charismatic guy and is going to bring the fireworks whenever you're fighting. That being Joaquin Buckley. And that fight gets signed. UFC fight night, Man and Fio Rot versus Aaron Blansfield, co-main event, the fight that we all wanted to see. And I, in my opinion, is the only reason that this wasn't at the apex because they could justify putting this into arena. Because I don't care what you say. The real ones knew Vincente Luque versus Joaquin Buckley was always going to end in a finish. Now, I didn't do predictions on this one. And to be fair, my predictions were not great. But I didn't want to do a prediction for this one because I, I have a slight bias to picking Joaquin Buckley. We both have the same jujitsu jitsu coats. I, I didn't want to... In, 
infect those picks. But I did not expect him to win the way that he did. I thought he was going to win by a KO or TKO. I did not expect it the way that it happened. Let me tell you why I picked the way I did and give you some closer for the Vincente Luque stands. Like MMA Guru. I bet, dude, the MMA Guru live stream was something different last night. Like, and I mean that in the best of way. That, that, was, some, that was some unparalleled inter entertainment. And yes, no. Maybe if I wasn't a Buckley fan, I would feel depressing from the Luque loss. But this is the way I saw it. Vincente Luque has been taking damage throughout his entirety of his career. I would have picked Ian Gary to beat Luque. I'm sorry. I, I just would have. I think Luque has been taking a lot of damage. And I think you're at a point in your career where if you're going to go blow for blow with somebody where you used to win, if your chin's starting to go, those are the first guys to go. So what I thought was going to happen is, in exchange, Vincente Luque was going to get the better of Joaquin Buckley, keep it tighter, catch him with a check hook whenever he came in. But I thought Buckley was going to catch him with something, because Buckley has some unorthodox striking, but damn, he can hit. Dude is dude can throw. And that's how I thought it was going to end. I thought he was either going to get a KO or rock him badly and go into a TKO. What ended up happening, fight starts off pretty slow, but in the second round, Vincente Luque, Vincente Luque, I don't even know if he got really hurt, but where he did make a mistake and what did get him hurt is he went for a, it was either a single leg, I believe it was a double leg, goes for a double leg, Joaquin Buckley hits the sprawl on him, and Vincente Luque, for whatever reason, and this is not to take away credit from what Buckley did, it's not, not at all. Vincente Luque made a bad decision and got punished for it. And that is something that you should never do in MMA unless your name is ends with Burns or Oliveira. Pull guard in MMA. Listen, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Never pull guard in MMA. Like, unless your jiu-jitsu is just way better than your opponent and you can tactically pull guard, then do that. But I would just argue don't do it and get a takedown. So he pulls guard with Joaquin Buckley, the muscle ball, and proceeds to get... No, no, he doesn't even pull guard. He pulls open guard, not even closed. Joaquin Buckley gets into half guard and proceeds to pound Vincente Luque's face in. Okay? Just pound this man in. I don't even think he was completely out. I don't even think he was... I think he was rocked by the end of the fight. Yeah. I don't, I, I think the stoppage was good. A lot of people are saying early stoppage. This is my mind. If Vincente Luque is just going to sell up like this, barely throw any strikes back, and the fight, there's just no point. If Vincente Luque is going to make that type of decision, then he should lose for that decision. Early stoppage, say what you want. I think Luque would have lost either way. Luque wasn't really doing anything. People are talking about another L for Jiu-Jitsu. He's a black belt. There's difference between black belts. Understand, Vincente Luque is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. There's a difference between a black belt and a black belt, okay? I could make a whole video explaining that to you, but just know, as much as I like Vincente Luque, I would not say his grappling offensively is black belt in terms of we're going at, like, pro grappling. I would say, like, purple going into, like, a brown belt. His striking is what put him on the map. Like, I don't understand how that's a controversial thing. But I want to talk about this, so... In the post-fight press conference, Joaquin Buckley goes in and he says something. He does something that I've I got to give Buckley credit for because it reminds me of Bobby Green. But Bobby Green made a mistake with this. And this is what it is. Capitalizing on the hype that you have, Buckley can speak like a superstar. He can speak like a guy who can drum up hype for a fight. He's always been like that. He just had to get the wins, okay? That's all he needs. He just needs to get a good, good record at a division. Welterweight's a clean sake. He is undefeated at welterweight. So now that he has a three-fight win streak, is now ranked in the division. That's how crazy it is. Well, Joaquin Buckley is now ranked in the welterweight division right now. In a time that the division is sifting guards. Okay, like th this has actually gone very, very well for him. So let me tell you what the bad thing you could have done. Bobby Green did this. So Bobby Green got a lot of hype. And immediately, I'm not even kidding you, I remember raising when this happened. Bobby Green, after he got like that, that hype right back in his, to his career, decides, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take a short notice bout against Islam Makachev. 
Do not do that. Hanato Moicano is another dude. Beats Drew Dober, gets that height back. And I'm going to be honest with you, I think he made a mistake fighting Jalen Turner. I thought he should be fighting Patty Pimblett. I don't care if you have to wait out longer. I think he made a mistake fighting Jalen Turner. Patty Pimblett wants the Hanato Moicano fight. I think you would have gotten more hype if you beat Patty Pimblett. I think Hanato Moicano made a mistake. And his mistake was not waiting for Patty and instead going on UFC 300 against a tougher opponent in Jalen Turner. Bobby Green's mistake was fighting the most difficult possible opponent for the least bit of gain. And that is Islam Makachev on short nose. Careers never really recovered from that. He beat Grant Dawson and then immediately fought Jalen Turner when he could have gotten Dan Hooker. Like, you don't have to fight all the time, dog. Those are the mistakes of them. But Buckley, what Buckley did is he didn't call out a specific opponent. No, no. He wanted to be the main event of UFC St. Louis. Now, if you don't already know, Derek Lewis is already the main event of that. And I'm going to be honest with you, I like Derek Lewis. Unless Derek Lewis is fighting a name that also means something in that division. And I'm sorry, Lewis isn't fighting somebody that with a name that really means something. If it was Derek Lewis versus like Robulus Dispain, then yeah, that's a main event. You can make that the main event of a fight night. But it's Derek Lewis versus... I can't even remember the guy's name. I'm sorry. So... Buckley is in a place right now where let me tell you the potential opponents he could get. He could get Sean Brady. Joaquin Buckley, Sean Brady. That is a main event. That is a fight night main event. Another fight he could get is a rematch with Kevin Holland. Again, amazing fight night main event. And listen, Derek Lewis doesn't want to do five rounds. Like, can we just be real here? Do you think Derek Lewis wants to do a five round fight? No, he wants three rounds. If if he could make it so, he would want one round. Joaquin Buckley wants to do the main event. He even insisted on, I'm going to be fighting on that St. Louis card, and I'm going to be the main event. I'm sorry, Lewis, you're going to have to be pushed back to the co-main. Did it in the um, pre-fight press conference. No, post-fight press conference, my bad. And he can do that. Because his opponents that he can choose are Sean Brady, which I think is the most likely. Kevin Holland being the second most likely. But... A fight that you could also make is Michael Venom Pades. Michael Venom Pades has said that he doesn't really want to fight Wonder Boy. Again, you can also do Wonder Boy against Joaquin Buckley, but I think it's going to be Colby Covington, Ian Gary. Ian Gary said that he doesn't want to fight anybody down in the rankings, which I understand, but you don't have to sound like a Karen because before you were just whining about it. So I, I get that. Colby Covington can't fight, Ian Gary's not fighting. Wonder Boy, it's crickets from his crew. MVP said that he doesn't want to fight Wonder Boy. He wants a different fight. Kevin Holland is coming off a loss to MVP. So you can do the rematch with Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland will take any fight under the sun. And you can do Son Brady, who was supposed to fight Vincente Luque. Those are your choices, Buckley. Th those are the fights that you can do that can be a headliner of a UFC fight night St. Louis. And that is how you get that main event spot. Call for any one of those guys. And please do not just, like, you made the right choice of just picking a fight night that you want to be the main event, but because automatically that makes it so certain people aren't going to be doing it. But just stick to that. Don't be taking a sort notice bout against Savkat Rachmanov, please. Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, don't, don't, be fl don't be messing around like Bobby Green did and lose your, the entirety of your hype to a Dagestani. But there you go. I just want to make a quick video on that. Overall, pretty interesting fight night. A lot of weird stoppages. Not weird stoppages, like weird circumstances. Chris Weidman won via eye poke into TKO. A dude, um, Andre um, Petrosky, knocked himself out with a single leg. And Vincente Luque decided pulling guard is the best base for MMA. So... Overall, pretty decent fight night. A lot of raising. It was pretty funny on the live streams. But with that out of the way, adios, guys. And thank you all for watching.